Bernard Tobin here at Ag in Motion in Saskatoon. I'm over at Nutrient Premium Fertilizer Technologies now, catching up with Lyle Cowell, Senior Agronomist. Sir, how's it going? It's going very well, Bernard. Uh, it's a beautiful day, sunny day. The crops are good in Western Canada, and it's been a really good show. Awesome. Lots of people around for sure. Hey, I want to talk some issues here in Western Canada, specifically soil salinity. And I guess maybe let's, let's start with, you know, how does salt accumulate in soil? Well, with salts in Western Canada, which is a primary factor in marginal land in a lot of, a lot of Western Canada, uh, the salts are natural. They, they were here when we broke the land, and they're just part of the soil cycle of, of uh, soil development, and they're just here to stay. They move up and down. Uh, when, it's, when there's water moving downward through the profile, salts move downward and out, outside of the root system. Uh, you get high water tables though it brings the salts to the surface so uh, they're natural salts they're primarily uh, sulfate salts and they're just part of the landscape that we have to deal with in a lot of western Canada. So when can it start limiting plant growth or I guess impede growers ability to manage the soil? Right? Yeah the, the primary factor that that uh, salts bring with them is it reduces the ability of seed and seedlings to grow because it reduces their ability to absorb water. Um, the, the critical stage, of course, is seed germination, and very often a uh, crop doesn't even germinate in those saline areas. So if you can get a crop to germinate, and if we can have some of the salts move down through and out of the rooting profile, I think crops can sometimes tolerate it better. But nevertheless, uh, it, it's a competition for the plant to absorb water against the forces of the salts, which absorb water away from the plant roots. Yeah. Let's talk about what growers can do. And first thing that comes to your minds is forages and get them in there. You know, there's, there's not a lot of good solutions um, and there's not a lot of solutions that truly work to uh, deal with salinity. Now we have to remember that salinity, well, it is a salt problem, but it's driven by uh, soil water. So don't focus on the salts, focus on the soil water. So if you can establish a long-term forage crop that is tolerant of salinity and capable of germinating in a saline area, then those forage roots will start to lower the water table. They're constantly using water. And so the salts with time will slowly move down in the soil profile. And that is the best, easiest way to manage salinity. A lot of these forage crops are very tolerant of salinity and, and very, very productive. So you can take an area of a field that can barely grow a crop of canola or wheat. And suddenly you have a forage crop that is extremely productive. So the number one solution to salinity in Western Canada is a forage crop. There's other solutions. Um, and, and part of that solution can be recognizing soil fertility management. I said that uh, our salts are primarily driven by sulfate salts. So of course you don't need to apply sulfur in saline areas. Because of the lower yield and because there's often residual nitrogen and phosphorus in these areas, you can reduce fertilizer rates of those nutrients. And then in turn, recognize where your really good yields are on the farm and take that expenditure in fertilizer and apply it to where you really make the money in the field. A variable rate strategy. Variable rate fertilizer. And this is the, the first step in variable rate fertilizer management that most farmers in Western Canada can take. It's simple. They recognize where the saline areas are. You manage those, take your costs from those areas and move them to the highly productive, profitable part of your farm, and that's the best solution. What about, I guess, managing expectations? That, uh, that's I mean, that I mean, is very key. I mean, and managing your input costs, because yeah. you know, if the yield is not there and inhibited by salt, we, could, we need to manage that. Absolutely, and, and farmers recognize this. I mean, they, they know, they can right now, in, in this time of year, you can see the saline areas in the field. What we have to take that then is that message that the crop is telling us in the field that where the production is going to be low and manage expectations for next year. Remember in winter time and seeding next spring that those areas are not going to be productive and so if a, you're still going to seed an annual crop then manage it as a lower yielding area of the field. And the next step again, maybe instead of managing a low yielding annual crop maybe you can start managing a really high yielding forage crop on those areas because if they can tolerate, if again, if those forages can tolerate the salinity, there's lots of groundwater there for them to grow. They do, they can do very, very well. Anything else to consider, uh, Lyle? I mean, we, 
there's always tiling, but that's not necessarily an option for a lot of it's, people. It's tricky. Tiling uh, often comes to the front in a lot of people's mind because tiling will intercept groundwater and intercept salts in the soil and be able to drain it off of the soil. Um, it can be difficult to do these in saline areas because most saline areas are in the lower part of the landscape of a field. So it's, you have to have a place for that water to flow and that can be hard to find in these salines in saline systems. So that, that's a problem. Where are you going to put the water? Who downstream wants to accept the excess water and the salts that you're draining from the field? Um, tiling is expensive. Um, it can be effective, but you have to recognize the limitations of tiling when it comes to salinity management. In the end, uh, Western Canada is always short of forages and that is still in my mind the best and easiest solution for managing salinity. Hey Lyle, some great insights. Appreciate you making some time for Real Agriculture here at Ag Emotion. Thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be here.